paramedic 33, what is your yeah. emergency? Yes, sir, I need to, I, uh, I need an ambulance as soon as possible, sir. Uh, sir, oh, I have a, we have a, a gentleman here that needs help and he's not breathing. You're talking about Michael Jackson here. It was absolutely huge. There was a lot of pressure to get it right. This isn't a man who should have died. He's not breathing yet. He's not breathing and we need to, we're trying to pump him, but he's not. He's okay. Not okay, how old is he? He's uh, 50 years old, sir. 50, okay. He's unconscious, he's not breathing. Yes, he's not breathing. When we were dispatched to a 50-year-old male, cardiac arrest, we think this is a viable patient. This is someone if we get to in a timely manner, we can save. And then when I enter this room, opulent room, with medical equipment in it, I realize there's something unusual here. What 50-year-old male would be laying in bed at noon with medical equipment? We're not looking at the patient at that moment. Until my partner did. He looked up and whispered the name, Michael Jackson. When I realized who it was, I was surprised. We had no idea he was there. None of us had any idea who was living in our neighborhood. Okay. Um, was anybody witness what happened? Uh, no, just the doctor, sir. There was a man with our patient who identified himself as the doctor. And as such, I immediately asked him some information. What had happened? How long has this been going on? And he told me then that it had just happened. This was a patient to me that it seemed that he had not just passed away, that some time had gone by before we were notified. And in fact, later, when you're reflecting on this call, the days, the weeks, the months afterwards, one of the greatest regrets that all of us had was that we had not been called sooner. When we came outside, that's when we became aware of a very large presence. We were trying to back out on the street only to be hindered by many, many cameramen putting their lenses against the glass windows of the moving ambulance. People seem to forget or don't realize about this investigation. It was a death investigation. It really wasn't a crime. Um, at the time. From the information that I had, it was probably an accident or natural, and we would find out that he had some pre-existing medical condition, and then we would be done. Just look at what we knew in the first hours of this. Taken to the hospital, there wasn't a bloody knife, there wasn't a smoking gun. There was nothing on the surface that would lead anyone to believe anything nefarious had occurred. When I arrived at the hospital, Dr. Berry was gone. So he was no longer there at the scene. We're in a bit of a panic then. Uh, the one person that was in a room with them at the time that everything happened is no longer at the hospital. There were several attempts right away to get a hold of Dr. Murray uh, that were negative, that he, they were going to voicemail. Yeah, family members, Jackson family members coming in and people wanting some questions answered as well as us. It is believed he suffered cardiac arrest in his home. A team of doctors, including emergency physicians and cardiologists, attempted to resuscitate him. The emergency room physician, they believed it was a heart attack, partly because of what Mr. Murray had told them never told them anything about any other narcotics or anything. They just believed he had had a heart attack and stopped breathing. 